copy of the slides and I am starting to record the session as well. So for the whole series, you will get um, a copy of the recording. So number one in our social media framework session. So this is the first category we'll uh, talk about. It's called sweet treats. So I like to think of this as sweet or pretty pictures. It could be some examples I just thought of. A sunrise on your farm, strawberries, like a huge pile of strawberries in a bucket, your row of beautiful pumpkins that are growing, a bush that's full of blueberries, your homemade ice cream that your farm makes. Those are just some examples of sweet treats. And I put up this, um, I, I did tell some of you guys that I will be um, having examples pop up from local North Carolina farms. So if your farm is up here, that's awesome. I think you're doing a great job. So I did pull some examples. Um, this is from Randlow Dairy. And so they are um, a company that's based right outside of the Triangle area. And they've been doing uh, what they're um, coining as cow side pickup. So they're a dairy farm and they're, um, providing their milk, heavy cream, and ice cream for cow side pickup. And so they've been doing a really great job on social media. It's actually how I found out about them was through Instagram. And so this is an example of just a sweet treat photo. This technically is a sweet treat. It's a photo of his ice cream, but the farmer has his glove on and a cup of the ice cream and he took a picture with the beautiful backdrop and he just, um, put up on Instagram that yesterday was our best day yet for selling milk and ice cream. We're floored by y'all's support and so appreciate it. So I thought this was a really great example. And then he did a little reminder saying that the next cow side pickup is next Tuesday from four to 6 p.m. So I thought this was a really wonderful idea. Um, I mean, this can really be anything. Like we said, it could be, um, you know, a sunrise on your farm, a beautiful picture of the strawberries, whatever your product is, think about like a close up shot that just looks absolutely stunning that will get a lot of people's attention on social media. Number two is pro tips. So I really like this category because you guys are all experts. You're farmers, you're the expert in your field. So you can share some of your expertise on social media. So keep in mind for someone just getting started in ag or for someone who doesn't really know much at all about agriculture, this stuff is really cool for them. So I know uh, someone mentioned that they're with the Onion Growers Association. I mean, so I bet a lot of people don't even know how an onion grows. So, you know, use your pro tip about how things grow, the knowledge of milking cows, etc. You can post some of your knowledge that you think might be common sense, but to the general public, that probably isn't common sense. So use your pro tips on social media. So some examples that I put on here, what time of year should you plant blueberry bushes? If you sell plants, maybe your, your farm has a nursery component. You could share your knowledge and farming practices. How do you water tomato plants appropriately? I mean, the list goes on. Think of fun ways that you can highlight your expertise on social media. And I um, got this example from Blue Thumb Farms. So I thought this was an, an absolutely great example. And this was from, um, it said five hours ago, I pulled this one last night. So Blue Thumb Farms put up a caption that says, water quality measurements are a daily task here at the farm. Have to make sure our plants are happy and healthy no matter the season. So I thought that was really cool. I learned that they take water quality measurements at their farm. So things that you might think as like monotonous tasks or just like common sense, they really aren't. It can make a great social media post. So I thought this was a wonderful idea um, and great example of a pro tip. So this one, I know it's not ag related, but I did want to share. Um, this is actually my brother-in-law's auto shop in Warrington, North Carolina. So they started uh, this new uh, hashtag called Tabor Tip Tuesday. So the auto shop is called Tabor Auto Center. And so they uh, kind of did like a play on words. So Tabor Tip Tuesday, some nice alliteration there. And so every Tuesday, they post one of these Tabor Tip Tuesdays and they use that hashtag. So this was one about um, engine air filters. So it was talking about just like a, a short, quick fact about if your air filter gets too dirty or clogged, what you should do. And so I thought that was just a really fun example, something that you guys could certainly utilize. So maybe think of creating a tip Tuesday or some kind of fun hashtag for your business and share something once a week if this category is really speaking to you. So the third category, I really love this one. It's called benefit and bonus. So people love free stuff and they really love to feel exclusive. 
So this category for social media posts could include maybe something like a contest that you want to host on social media, some freebies, samples that you're giving away, code words. This one is really fun. I always like to use the example of um, Bar Taco. So this is a restaurant that's in uh, North Carolina and they have a few other locations throughout the, the United States, but they do a code word. It's called the secret taco. And so they post about it on social media every now and then, and you have to know to use the word secret taco when you go in and order at the restaurant, because then they'll offer you whatever that secret menu item is. So it's only available to people who are in the know. So you have to say secret taco to your server, and then you'll get to order the secret fish tacos for that week. So I think code words are really fun. You could do something like that. Maybe you're an agritourism farm. And you could say for your social media followers to get 25% off of their ticket price for the hayride, um, use code word XYZ or whatever you want to come up with. So that's a fun way. And it is a nice little perk for people that are following you. And they'll continue to follow you when you throw out some of these benefits and bonuses to them. So one of the examples was get one free kids ice cream when you mention this social media post while visiting the farm. So that could be an example. So I wanted to um, pull this up as well. So this is something um, from Volmer Farm in North Carolina. This was um, last year, I just pulled this. Uh, they did a post this weekend. Um, it was October 5th through 6th. Is teacher and school staff appreciation at Volmer Farm. All teachers and school staff, along with two family members, receive free admission to the back 40. And then it also goes on to talking about a military family discount. So this was kind of cool. It was uh, using social media to promote some of the different benefits and bonuses that their followers and that their patrons will receive. So if you're running some kind of discount or sale, definitely post about it on social media. People love to see that. So this is something else that I know we've been doing a lot of um, is working with influencers. So one way that you can use this category benefit and bonus to even boost up your followers is to seek out some people in your community that I like to call influencers. So look up people that are maybe ag bloggers or people that are food bloggers and collaborate with them. So this is an example that we did with the Green Tea blog. She's a local blogger in Raleigh, North Carolina, and we collaborated with her. This is a restaurant example. So the restaurant is Stir. They're located in Raleigh's North Hills area. And we had her host a giveaway on her social media platforms. So she hosted it on Instagram and also Facebook. And then you'll see she has instructions here. So to enter this contest to win one $50 gift card to STIR, you had to make sure that you're following her account and also STIR's Instagram account. And then you had to tag friends who love to eat. And then she would let you get multiple entries. So the more friends you tagged, the higher the chances were of you winning that $50 gift card. And then she put her parameters of when the contest was ending and when the winner would be announced. So this was a really fun way to just collaborate with the influencer. Stir gave her a free meal so she could take this awesome photo. And then she was able to help um, some of her followers start following Stir and vice versa. So Stir's follower count just over like about a, I think it was a two day period, increased by 170 people. So that was huge. For, um, for their business. So think of some influencers that you can start collaborating with. And if you're you know, kind of at a loss for how to get started on you know, a, collabor a collaboration like this, start following them. So I would say go on your farm's account, maybe use some hashtags to find these people, hashtag NC food blogger, hashtag Raleigh food blogger, whatever city or town you're from, and see what pops up. Start following them and start liking and commenting with them and build some rapport. And then maybe send them a direct message on whatever social platform and ask them, hey, would you be willing to do a fun collaboration? And remember that there's definitely some give and take there. You don't want to just ask them, hey, will you do a giveaway uh, to win $50 to come visit my farm or a free bucket of strawberries? Invite them out to experience your business and then ask them to do some type of collaboration. I think it's uh, really great when they can actually experience your business, your farm, before they start hosting a giveaway because it makes it way more authentic and um, it, it goes to show their followers how much they really did enjoy their experience with your business. 
All right, number five, locator. So this is a great category for people that are in the mobile type of food industry. Perhaps you're um, a farmer who's very mobile. You set up at a lot of different farmers markets or you have roadside stands that you wanna set up at. So this is a great uh, category for just letting your followers know where are you today. So some examples that I thought of, um, announcing that your farm is selling watermelons at the downtown Raleigh farmers market or at the Western Wake farmers market, whatever markets you go to on X date from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. or whatnot. So that would just be a quick example of locator. So this is a fun one that I pulled. I love following Elodie Farms on social media. I think that they have such a great social media account, so definitely feel free to give them a follow. But Elodie Farms, they put up um, this hilarious picture of one of their goats. They have so many crazy goat photos, and they put some text over, have you ordered, and then their website URL. And so um, they had an announcement from Katie Did, their goat, she had a message for everybody to head over to their website and order by Friday at 10 p.m. for Saturday pickup. And so then they let everybody know where they're hosting Saturday pickups and um, what products were available. So it's letting people know um, how to order and then where they're gonna be and the time frame that they're uh, gonna be there. So use some fun pictures to capture people's attention. It could even just be you set up at the farmer's market with a, a beautiful display of your radishes and lettuces and things like that. So just um, really remember to use a nice quality image or video when you're um, posting these locator type of examples. Number five, community service. So this is a great category for those of you that really do a lot for the community and give back. So this could be featuring you out in the community, maybe at a charity event or a fundraiser, perhaps helping with a community project. I know there's a lot of virtual community projects that are going on right now. So maybe give yourself a little pat on the back and share that you're doing this with your followers and then also tag other people that you're collaborating with on uh, these types of community service activities. And then um, some examples that I have thrown up here. So number one, you could have an example of donating some produce to the local food bank. Perhaps you're uh, donating beef that was served at a charity event or your, your farm is helping with a community service project. So those are all great examples of what you could share on social media. I know when Hurricane Florence was happening, I worked with a local sweet potato grower and I had um, their farm donate a ton of sweet potatoes to the World Central Kitchen that was providing meals to people that were in need. And so that's just one example. I took a photo of all the sweet potatoes on her car and posted it on tabletop social media and then she reposted me. So that's just a great way that you can, you know, in a classy way, promote that you're giving back to your community. And so this was a great example uh, that I pulled from a local distillery that's in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. So this is Esteban, he's the owner of Topo Distillery and they started making, instead of booze, they started making hand sanitizer. So this was a really interesting shift that happened uh, because of the, the current pandemic that we're living with right now. And so Esteban was able to donate to a bunch of different people um, a lot of different fire departments, the Durham Rescue Mission, and they donated 350 gallons of, of hand sanitizer to these first responders, healthcare workers, and those in need. And so I think he did a really nice job. What he did was he created just a quick video, and it was a collage of all the different photos of him dropping off hand sanitizer to these people. So that was just a great example of community service. And you'll see that he tagged all the people um, that helped him to donate the hand sanitizer. Like he got uh, the buckets from Lowe's from Improvement, so he tagged them and other uh, folks that made it possible. So number six is happy customers. I really like this category because you will get a lot of your happy customers that are tagging you on social media and then perhaps you can repost them. Um, so it gives you a lot of great um, content to be sharing. And I did get a question I wanted to address from Victoria Barlow. She said when posting, uh, what do you have to consider about patron privacy? Is it okay to post pictures of visitors on your social media sites? So that's a really great question and I, I would love to address it during the happy customer section. So if people are posting a photo and tagging your business, I would definitely recommend contacting them before you decide to repost it. 
So there's a lot of great apps out there. Like the repost app is something I use for Instagram. Um, you can even just like save some of your followers photos and then give them credit on social media when you're resharing it. I would definitely say, um, just to respect their privacy, shoot them a quick direct message or even just comment on their post and say, hey, my farm really loves this photo of your kid with the strawberry bucket. Do you mind if we repost it on our social platforms? And just wait until they respond to you. And then uh, chances are, I mean, most of the time, a lot of the folks that we um, correspond with will just let us go ahead and post it. But every now and then you might get one that says like, hey, that's of my kid. I don't really want you guys to post that, which I totally understand. So I would say always err on the side of caution and ask if you can repost them before you actually go forward and do that. And make sure that you're always giving proper photo credit. It can be as simple as putting the little camera emoji with a colon and then tag whatever um, Instagram user or Facebook page that you're pulling that photo from. That way you give folks credit. So uh, definitely be sure to do that. Hopefully that answers your question, Victoria. So back to the happy customers section. So happy customers, this would be posting pictures of people with your product. It could be somebody wearing your farm's t-shirt. Maybe you have a cool hat, some swag, cooking with your produce or visiting your business. So some examples, going back to that bucket of strawberries, the customer with the bucket of strawberries that he or she just picked. Maybe it's a school group after a field trip to your agritourism farm. So those are some examples of happy customers. So this was one that um, I picked from Odom Farming Company. I thought this was such a great one. They actually had um, a swipe through of, I think it was like five or six different photos from the weekend of some of their happy customers. And so um, another idea is that when people are visiting your farm and maybe you're out and about on your farm, people are picking strawberries, you could go up to them if, you know, of course, if they're under 18, ask the parent that they're with if you have their permission to post it on your social handles. But for Odom, they could go around, they're taking all these great photos, they've gotten the parent's permission, and they're gonna say, hey, we're gonna post you guys on social media later today, be on the lookout for it. So that's kind of a fun idea. And so uh, they just put in their caption that we're picked out for today, so we're closing, but, um, and she's like keeping everybody posted about when they might be open back up for more strawberry picking. And I love these two little guys. They have a huge smile on their face and their bucket just full of strawberries. So number five, or I'm sorry, number seven is upcoming events. So this is the next category. It's store or event demos. Maybe it's a rodeo that you're hosting, a speaking engagement. Maybe you're having like a fun, you know, day on the farm, um, a, like having a chef come out to the farm and cooking with your goat cheese, whatever you might be having. I know right now, um, due to COVID-19, we're not doing a whole lot of events, but there have been a lot of virtual events. So maybe you're doing like a Facebook Live. You're going to go live with all your goats and teach everybody how to make goat cheese. So think of fun ways that you can share about upcoming events on your social media. So some examples, perhaps you're the, farm, the farmer that's coming out to the NC State Animal Science Club and giving a presentation. Make sure that you're announcing that. Maybe you're giving a demo at the farmer's market about how to cook your squash or uh, you're gonna announce some of those Facebook Live or Instagram TV type of sessions that are coming up. This is one that I pulled from Simply Natural Creamery, and I think that they signed up today for the class. So uh, props to you for this one. I pulled it, it's from October 1st, 2019. They were having um, a big five-year anniversary party. And so this was a great example. They used the flyer that they had created on social media, and it, um, it definitely tells you what all is happening. They're going to have food trucks, vendors, games, ice cream, pony rides, and live music. And they, then they included the logo for uh, the person who was going to be playing music at the farm. And so it clearly has the date and the time, and they were able to post this on social media to get a lot of attention for their upcoming event. Number eight, behind the scenes. So this is a really great one. It's pulling back the curtain and letting people know what's happening on your farm. So examples, and you guys might think these are the silliest things, but people love to see this. So one of them could be milking the cows. You know what, I do this twice a day. It's not that entertaining for me as a farmer or whatnot. Yes, it is, it's awesome. People wanna see that on social media. Planting seeds is another example. The little sprouts that are sprouting up watering the garden, harvesting your sweet potatoes, taking a quick video on your tractor, mowing the field. 
all these kind of things are, you know, second nature to you guys, but that is what really speaks volumes on social media. So I love this one. This is Elodie Farms again. Um, they were doing morning chores and you'll see that the goat is having a lot of fun with one of the owners. So I thought that was a fun behind the scenes example. And then this is another one, uh, Barbie Farms harvested a load of beautiful cauliflower this week, looking forward to the rain ending and heading out to the Davidson Farmer's Market tomorrow morning. So this was kind of a mixture of behind the scenes and also locator, letting people know where they're going to be um, the next morning. So I thought that was a really great shot. Um, beautiful cauliflower. Number nine, founder focus. So this is one that's kind of similar to behind the scenes, but it's more focused on business building. So what are you working on right now? Be thinking of some of that. It's really great for when you're like pre-launching your business. Maybe you're adding like a new structure on your farm or you're expanding your dairy operation, or perhaps it's like the, the new year and you're setting goals for the new year. Take a quick photo of you, you know, at your desk writing out some of your goals. So what are you working on? And I have some great examples right here. Uh, this is from Fox Farm Forage, a mushroom farmer here in North Carolina. And she just took a great photo of kind of behind the scenes. She um, is a, a woman farmer and she wrote, me and my hubs are working late making blocks and spawn. We do this together now after he's done with his full time job. Things sure have changed due, the, due to the pandemic, but in many ways for the better. So just kind of a fun, very personal, type of post that she put out there um, that was also timely. And then this is another example of Burwell Farms there here in Warren County, they're truffle farmers. And um, so this was them planting their second um, patch of where they're gonna be growing their truffles. So I thought this was a really neat post, um, goes to show you what the behind the scenes looks like. Um, and so they even put a little uh, section on this caption let us know if you're interested in seeing more behind the scenes action when we're not in harvesting mode. So I thought that was kind of cool. Number 10 is terrific team. So this one should be very easy for you guys to do. I'm sure um, a lot of you have some team members, maybe it's your husband or your wife, or you have some employees. So this is a great category to highlight some of those awesome team members and staff that you have. So some easy examples, one could be just sharing a fun fact about one of your employees. Perhaps you wanna highlight an employee's work anniversary. Maybe it's somebody's birthday, you could give them a shout out. So this is a great example from Colfax Creek Farm. Uh, they took a really great shot of one of their employees, Caroline, and you can see the beautiful farm in the background and it says, meet Caroline. She became part of the Colfax Creek team last spring. She was born in Indiana, but raised here in North Carolina. She fell in love with farming. So it goes on and on to talk about her background and just giving people you know, more of an, an insight into who are these awesome members that make up your team. And I promise you that these posts will do so well for you on social media. I know we have some clients um, in the restaurant industry right now since you know, all the restaurants and bars are um, closed for dine-in. We've been highlighting some of the bartenders. Like, you know what, uh, we're gonna give a shout out to one of these bartenders. We're really looking forward to seeing you soon and doing like a short Q&A with them. And th those types of posts have been doing so well because people love that human interaction and that's something that we're all craving right now. So number 11 is industry insider. So what's happening on the ground right now? What are some trends and how can you show that you're the expert curator in the ag field? So perhaps, um, oh, I'm sorry, for some reason the examples, um, I did not copy and paste correctly, but industry insider, so what are some trends? So how would you show that you're, um, you're an expert? So this is a great example um, right here from Raleigh City Farm. So they were um, giving a shout out to an employee actually, but also showing that they're an industry insider. So this is their employee, Josh, who has his own YouTube channel. And um, he had, he's the resident beekeeper at Raleigh City Farm. And on YouTube, he's gonna cover installing a new colony, hive inspection, what equipment is needed, and lots of tips. So this is a great way to show that your farm is the expert in whatever industry you're in. So um, I love they use the hashtag know your beekeeper, dig where you live, lots of fun hashtags on this post. And it just goes to show folks that you really know what you're talking about and that you can share some of these kind of tips and tricks with uh, your followers. 
So um, number 12 is peeks back at your milestones. So past inspirations, flashbacks, and memories. And so I love um, this one. So this is a great history example. So this was a flashback from Fireside Farm NC. Um, they put 2019 was full of lovebirds. Here's to these two dear ones whose wedding flowers we delighted in making. Cheers, y'all. And then they tagged the people who just got married. So I think this is a really fun one um, to kind of flash back at some fun things that you've done throughout the year. I know a lot of times like, you know, in December or the start of the new year, people are doing like their top nine um, most commented on posts. That's like a fun way that you can use the history category. Something else you could do is um, some before and after shots. I think that would be a lot of fun. So going back to like the truffle farm, they could have taken a photo of, um, you know, first planting the, um, the farm. And then also now, um, maybe it's been like, you know, five years from now and all the trees are grown up and they're starting to harvest truffles. So that would be like a fun little swipe through that you could do on social media showing some of that history. Number 13, so this is a great one. Um, and I know we talked about it a little bit in the beginning, but answering a question. So ask your followers something fun. So think like trivia for your business. So one example that you could put up there, what year was our farm founded? How many strawberries do you think that we planted this year? Think of some fun questions that you could ask um, that, you know, maybe people don't necessarily know the right answer, but it would at least spark a lot of great engagement on your post. So maybe you ask people like, hey, you have a day to answer how many strawberry plants do you think that we planted this year? And then um, whoever gets the closest will win one free bucket of strawberries tomorrow. And so you could do something kind of like that to merge answering a question with some of those benefits and bonuses that we talked about earlier. All right, so number 14, this is the last one and it's gonna be before our group activity. So be thinking um, about what categories you're liking for a group activity. So number 14 is share something popular and a reference from pop culture. And so this is one that um, I've recently added to our social media framework sessions because I think that you can really capitalize on what's trending right now. So um, how can your business capitalize on some of these things? I love this example, dressing up like Tiger King. I don't know how many of you guys watch Tiger King. I was a sucker for it and I had to watch it because everybody was talking about it. But this was one of the most hilarious examples that went viral on the internet. And so you definitely have potential to go viral if you get a little bit creative. So this was a fun one. Um, two farmers dressed up like Joe Exotic and, and uh, one of the other guys on uh, the Tiger King Netflix series. And then they painted their cow to look like a tiger. So I thought that was absolutely ridiculous and hilarious. And this made the internet just blow up. Um, with all these crazy pictures, everybody was sharing this. They got a lot of great attention. It got picked up by tons of different media outlets from all around the world. So a really fun example of, um, you know, getting into that pop culture type of mindset and how you could capitalize on some of that. So look at um, what's trending. I know Twitter is a great re, um, a tool to look up and research what some of these pop culture things are and what's trending. So if you go onto Twitter, they have trending topics. And so Tiger King, I don't know if it's still up there, but it definitely was trending for quite a while. So that was something that you could take a look at, see what's trending and brainstorm some ways that you can get a little bit creative on your farm. So I did wanna go over quickly before our group activity, just some common mistakes that people make on social media. And I just throw this out there um, just to you know, bring light to it. And number one is just spending too much time on social media posts that nobody is really responding to. So I think you can tell from just going over all, all of these uh, 14 categories that these categories are meant for you to get a little bit creative and spark some engagement. So engagement is key. That's what's gonna really make your social media posts stand out from all of the other folks and all the other noise on social media. And then another mistake is not inviting all your personal social media connections to follow your business pages. So on Facebook, for instance, you can actually go to your business page and there's like the, the three dots that you can click. And so when you toggle over that, it will say invite friends to like this page. So make sure that you've done that, especially if you're a new farm, maybe you just set up all your social media pages and you totally forgot to invite all your personal connections to go and follow it. 
make sure that you go back and do that. And sometimes I'll just go in there and do that. Like I, I try to put a calendar reminder like once a month or once every other month and go in and, and invite all of my personal connections to like my business Facebook page because you guys know as well as I do, you're constantly adding new friends on Facebook or you know new people to your contact book on your phone. So make sure that those people that are some of your newer connections are invited to like your personal, or I'm sorry, your business um, uh, social media pages. And then make sure that you're using the tag features. So um, tag people because that helps to encourage for them to share those posts and for them to engage in some type of dialogue on social media. So um, I know Linda, I'm gonna give you a nice pat on the back from the North Carolina Farm Bureau. She does a great job of this when she's posting. She'll make sure um, if she's doing some type of like collaborative effort with um, other ag organizations, like maybe the Department of Ag, that she's tagging them on the North Carolina Farm Bureau post. So make sure that you're tagging everyone. It gives them a notification that they've been tagged and then they can go in and engage with you. And then only post messages when you want people um, to buy something from you, that's a no-no. I, I don't think that you should constantly be pushing like, buy this, buy now, go to my website, click here and buy this, because that just gets a little bit old and stale for people. I would say, you know, have a nice mix of that. Throw in some behind the scenes posts, throw in just like funny pop culture references, and then pepper in some of those um, posts that say like, hey guys, we're having a flash sale right now, click here and buy, you know, all these different plants online for our online plant sale. Another common mistake is not including pictures in each of your posts. So I would say, um, goes for a video too. Definitely include at least an image whenever possible and also video. Video does go a long way and you can take some fun uh, videos using apps like Boomerang on your phone. Um, just get creative because Posts that have images and videos do so much better than text only posts. And I have some great stats that I'll um, definitely share when we're gonna be talking about Instagram um, in a couple more sessions from now. And then um, another mistake is thinking that you have to do all your social media by yourself. So I will say it is okay to get some help on your social media. You know, maybe you're running around, you're milking cows, you're doing all the, the farm work and you're managing social media and it's just too much for you to handle. Perhaps look at NC State, maybe they have a great ag communications intern that would absolutely love to help you out in building up your social media platforms. Or maybe you have somebody that is on your team that has been begging you to manage your social media for your business. You know, maybe try it out and see how they do. So um, definitely get some help if it's something that you just don't have the time to do and that you might just be struggling with a, a little bit. So we're gonna, um, I, I wanted to save the last 10 minutes, which we're right on time, to go over some of these fun categories. So I am gonna ask if you can just chat me privately if you wanna be a volunteer, please. Um, so I want you guys to pick one of these um, different 14 categories and I want you to create um, just write it down. Uh, you can even write it into the chat if you want, but create a caption and um, think about what photo that, or video that you'd use and what category would it fall into. So I'll give you guys an example for um, tabletop media group. So something that I would do is number 10, terrific team. I love that category. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Quinn for my team, who's one of our social media managers, to take a photo of herself working during quarantine. And I'm gonna give her just an awesome shout out saying how great she's been um, during COVID-19 and helping out all of our clients and working around the clock. So I'm giving her just a fun shout out and that's the photo that I would use and um, some type of caption. So um, Amy has graciously volunteered. So Amy, if you'll go ahead and I'm gonna unmute you, um, but go ahead and tell us, um, Let's see. Yeah, here you are. Go ahead and tell us what category you're thinking about um, that you would want to use. Um, behind the scenes, we were working cows yesterday and we're a family farm. And so um, we have a pretty massive family of 17 of us. So we had all of our kids out there, all eight of them um, out there watching us work cattle. Um, and so I took some pictures of just the kids up on the fence, kind of watching what's happening and um, looking on from afar and learning all about the cattle and how we run them. That is awesome. That is such a great example. And that is a large family. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. So plenty of content to go around for you guys. 
Yes. And we uh, have agritourism too. So we mostly use this, um, like our forums for uh, Facebook and Instagram for our weddings and agritourism activities, but we're starting now to do more of the farm side of things. That's great. Thank you for sharing, Amy. You're welcome. All right. And next up, I have Renee who's volunteering. Um, she is picking behind the scenes for her um, favorite one. So Renee, if you want to um, chat with us and let us know um, what kind of photo or video you use, the caption, and um, what how it falls into behind the scenes. Um, a lot of the times what I do is like, it, it's just Michael and I here on the farm most of the time. And I try to take pictures when he's in the fields planting and then through harvest and on, I take a picture from start to finish and just kind of put that out there to show how the crop goes from start to harvest. And, um, but usually just that. Great, that's wonderful. Very cool. All right, and I'll, I'll take some other volunteers if you guys would like. I'm gonna pick on Linda Loveland um, as well to see what something uh, that she learned today and what category you might pick. I'll unmute you. See if she's there. There we go. Um, yeah, I'm learning a lot. Thanks for uh, for letting us uh, get in on this, Kristen. I appreciate it. Um, Absolutely. Probably one of the things we just did a, a story on the on peony farmers out uh, on eastern North Carolina. This is like the farthest south that they are. So this is maybe a behind the scenes thing as well. But um, they're the first ones to get their flowers out for Mother's Day. So all their flowers, they're shipping them like down to Florida, out to Hawaii, they go everywhere. But one of the funny things sort of behind the scenes is when I got there, I was trying to get shots of all these beautiful peonies, the first ones that had opened up and you know, they smell great, and they're just beautiful. And then they've got their crew of people walking through and they're just snapping the heads off of them and throwing all these beautiful flowers down on the ground. Well, they get those early ones because they've got to sell them as buds. So they don't want the blooms because that's just you know kind of draining the plant. So they snap off all these beautiful flowers and throw them on the ground. <laughs> so oh that was gosh. kind of behind the scenes, sort of the, one of the learning uh, events that we, I think that we saw when we were out there in, in Eastern North Carolina. It's kind of interesting. Yeah, and I, I do think that's a great example too of like a pro tip because it's behind the scenes, but also a pro tip where you can educate people about why they're actually doing that. Because I had no clue. I just learned something new. <laughs> and, they, and they're and they super hardy flowers. So this is one of those other things. Because they box them up. They're not any kind of water. And they'll last, put them in the refrigerator for days, even a week. And they look like they're all just dead, dried up, whatever. But you cut off the stem, put them in water, and they just blossom in this beautiful flower. So. Wow. Very cool. Thank you for sharing. All right, and then I have Heather Barnes. She's volunteered. So, Heather? Um, I'll pick the sweet treats. Um, we grow sweet potatoes, and so I'll put pictures of my kids out, you know, when we're seeding greenhouses or out in the field working. But I've also posted pictures of our kids making things with the sweet potatoes from our farm. Like I did one with one of my two of my boys making um, sweet potato chocolate chip mini muffins. And um, so that was, that was one that was pretty popular. That's awesome. That sounds delicious right now too. <laughs> Those are really good. And then I have uh, Barbara who is interested. I'll unmute you real quick. Barbara. Hey, um, growing onions here in Eastern North Carolina, we're actually the largest onion grower there is in North Carolina. Uh, this year we currently have 90 acres. Um, so um, aside from just being onion farmers though, we also grow potatoes and we're corn and soybean growers. Um, so we actually have two different social medias, one for Flatland Ag Inc which is for our onions and potatoes, and the other one for Triple P Farms for our grain. Um, so a lot of these, um, I was very pleasantly surprised that uh, I've already been incorporating. One of the things that I haven't though, and so I'm going to assume this will probably be under locator, so this mm -hmm. is something that we'll, we'll do, um, is try and work out something with our clients because we ship these, um, primarily east of Mississippi River, but all up and down the eastern seaboard, um, of them actually in different states um, having our onions. Um, we do sell to Walmart, Costco, um, Lidl. So we are in different uh, grocery stores, but it would really be cool to have some of those pictures or a video clip of them arriving in a different state. Um, 
And what we sell is by the tractor trailer load, 50 pound bags. Um, and of course, a lot of times you're not gonna walk into a grocery store and find a 50 pound bag. They're be loose or a three pound bag. Um, but that whole, uh, I think probably the question I would ask is how far can you find our onions? Um, and, and see how far that can go. Mm -hmm. That's a great idea. And I'm so glad that it sparked something new for you too. Um, I mean, definitely, I think it kind of goes along the lines too of like a happy customer in a way, you know, um, where you're, you're asking them to take a photo of the onions arriving at Lidl or whatnot. So um, I think that's a great tip for other farmers that are out there too. Um, maybe if you're selling to bigger places or just direct to consumer, ask them to take some photos and use a certain hashtag or tag you on social media. And that's great content that you can also share. So great example. And then um, I did have, let's see, Beth Smith chatted in here that um, they have a team member that everyone loves when they come out to the farm and it's their barrel train driver. So um, she put an example um, just asking him what he's up to during the off season and kind of featuring that. I think that's an awesome example. It's a great one, Beth. And then Lacey at Sweetberry Farm said that her most popular posts are sweet treat posts. So the post of their strawberries and homemade ice cream, and then also happy customers. So pictures of their guests having a really great time. And then uh, Victoria, did you want to share? Yeah, I, uh, I'm volunteering with a uh, local horse stable for their upcoming shows. And I was thinking that it would kind of be a behind the scenes upcoming events uh, smash up where you uh, show what it takes to get ready for a horse show, setting the course, supplies, uh, laying out the ribbons or determining and kind of, you know, do a speed through it to show how what the work that's involved to get ready for a, a horse event. Nice. That's a great one. You could do like the, the fun time lapse video if you want right. to. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. I love that. Thanks for sharing. Very cool. Well, I really appreciate you guys sharing some of your, um, your different examples and whatnot. I know I just saw in the chat, Arlene said, we get a lot of likes when we post pictures about our farm animals. Oh my gosh. Absolutely agree. Especially baby farm animals. Those will get the most likes <laughs> out of anything. So I think that's another uh, fun tip right there for you. So um, thank you guys so much. I know we could go on and on about some really great examples. I hope that this framework session really did help you to start thinking of different types of categories that you could post about. And uh, throughout this session, we're going to do some deep dives into Instagram, Facebook, Google business, which is a really important one. Um, we'll also talk about video and photos. So tips and tricks for both of those. And I know we did have a question that was chatted about YouTube. So we will touch on YouTube during the video session a little bit more. So be on the lookout for that. But this was really great. I hope um, that I'll start seeing some more of your posts on social media. I'll be following you guys. And we will definitely um, send you these slides and then also the recording. So um, I'll be sending that out after this presentation. So thank you guys so much. Feel free. Um, I'm going to pop open all of my contact info right here. So if you guys want to drop that down, feel free. Um, you'll also be getting an email from us. So thank you guys. I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll see you for the next session on Thursday. Alrighty guys, I'm going to hang on and um, chat with a couple people that had questions. If you have questions and want to hang on, um, feel free to pop in the chat. And Lacey, I saw um, you had a question, what social media platform works best in your opinion um, that you mainly focus on Facebook, but maybe more users are following on Instagram. So, I mean, it definitely depends on the type of business. Like for instance, some of our restaurant clients, I say it's great to use Facebook and Instagram because it's such a visually type of pleasing business, um, you know, beautiful food photos or whatnot. I think, um, especially since you're in the ag field, that being on Facebook and Instagram would be really great. 
Um, I, I would say Instagram, you'll get a little bit more of like a younger audience. Um, and so that would be a great one to be on for you. So if you're going to add on another social media platform, I would definitely recommend Instagram along with your Facebook. And then Victoria, did you have a question? Yeah, sorry. I'm getting it. There we go. No, you're good. I just kind of follow up to that one from earlier. Yeah. So just a follow-up question. Um, if you're on the farm and take pictures of a group of people picking strawberries in your field, can I post that without their permission? So what some uh, farms do is they actually have signage, like right when you walk up to the farm. I don't know if you guys have that, but it says like, you know, we, you're in a public space. We kind of have the liberty to take your photos and use them as we please. So yeah. I would say definitely make sure that you have some type of signage up and then you're in the clear for that. I would just be careful, like posting children, like especially yeah. if it's up close. So yeah. I always just say, ask for uh, the parents' permission before you post that. Yeah, and, and the problem you run into, I assume here, is that it gets a lot trickier if you put people's names on it. It's just a picture of people off in the distance. You know, you can't really tell who they are. Yeah, they can't really be searched. Exactly. I think that is completely fine. And I always say err on the side of caution. Like you said, take a photo of people far out, like in a distance. And I think that that would be a bit better of a strategy. But what a lot of farmers do, they'll just go right up to the group and say, hey, can I take your, your photo? I'm going to use it on social media. Do I get your permission? And then if the parent says, absolutely, go for it. Um, so sometimes if you want to get a little bit crazier, I guess, is have like a photo release form. Um, we had this for one of our clients, they're a shopping center in Raleigh. And we had to, every time we were taking a picture of anybody in the shopping center, we had to get them to actually sign a photo release form. So it just covers you even more. Um, but yeah. it's kind of a headache to do. So. Sure. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Have a great day. You too. All right, Holly, I see you have a question. I'll unmute you. Holly, for some reason, it's not letting me unmute you. I don't know if maybe your microphone is not working. But if you want to chat me. And then Lacey is asking um, one more question. Where do you think that the most influencers are? So in my experience, having worked with a lot of social influencers, I would say that most of them are in bigger cities. So uh, Charlotte has a lot of great influencers. The Triangle area, again, a bunch. Asheville, a little bit less. And same for Wilmington, a little bit less. But I would say um, definitely look and see about some of those areas. So like if you're trying to find like a Raleigh area food blogger, you can do hashtag Raleigh food blog or hashtag Raleigh food blogger. And you might be able to find um, some folks that way. And a lot of them will travel. I mean, I've coordinated farm tours for some people before and um, some of them will travel out uh, quite a bit to come and visit a farm, um, especially if you know, you're giving them something for free and it's a great experience for them. I think I've unmuted, unmuted myself. Yeah, Can you I, hear me I hear you. Yeah. Hey, Holly. Hi there. Sorry. A um, little bit of a learning curve sometimes. You're fine. What's your question? My, my question is, we're just starting to get into Instagram. We've been on Facebook, you know, a long time. But is there a way to post to one and have it automatically go to the other? Or do you have to manually do both? So you can set up some, um, some ways directly in the app to post from like, say you're posting on Instagram, as long as your Facebook page is linked to your Instagram account, which we will definitely talk about in uh, the upcoming sessions. But as long as they're linked together, there will be a button that when you're going to post, it will say automatically post to Facebook. And so you can click that button and it will automatically post your Instagram post to your Facebook page. So um, that's something really great. But then I will chat you in, um, it's called hootsuite.com. So this is a great tool. It's a social media scheduling platform and you can actually schedule out your social media posts far in advance and you can have like the same kind of 
photo and caption go out to all your social media posts all at once if you wanted to. So it's a great tool. I would recommend trying out. Okay, great. Thank you. That yeah. sounds like a good time. Yeah. Table. Did you say that was Hoot Tweet? It's called Hoot Sweet. I put it in the chat. Um, H O O T Sweet. Oh, there it is. Good. Yep. Yeah. But that, that's a great one. You can actually link. I had, um, we used to use HootSuite for my agency and we switched to a different platform. But um, for HootSuite, I used to have like my LinkedIn page, my Pinterest, um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, you can do all sorts of things that are linked up there. So I think that would be a great tool for you guys. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then Lacey's asking if I can uh, chat the repost app. So it's literally just called repost. Um, and if you look it up on your app store, let me see. I think if, if you just type repost, it should pop up. Um, it's the one, yeah, there's a bunch of them, but I just use, it's just called repost. I think it's a blue background. I'm looking it up real quick. Yeah, repost for Instagram. Um, I'll, I'll kind of put it up right here. Hopefully you can see that blue um, icon. But repost for Instagram. It's a great one. Um, I like how it looks. It's like a nice uh, clean layout. But it's by Red Cactus, if that helps. <laughs> so awesome. Well, thank you guys. This was really great. And I will be back on this Thursday. So I look forward to hopefully seeing you guys again on Thursday. And I'm going to go ahead and end the meeting and I will be able to send the recording and also the slides your way. So thank you, everybody. Have a great day.